Um, הנדיבוס, היא המידה אשר יגיע בו האדם למעלות גדולות. Generosity is a um, attribute through which one can attain very high levels. וכשהנדיבוס הדרך טובה, and when the generosity is expressed in a good way, אז היא משובחת מאוד, it is greatly lauded as an attribute. ובו יגיע אל מלוס רבויס בעולם הזה ובעולם הבא, through which he will attain very high levels, both in this world and the next. כמו שנאמר, as it says in the verse, מתון אדם ירחיב לוי, ולפני גדולים ינחנו. The giving of a person, or a giving person, will result in expansion, gates basically being opened, for him, and he will be placed between, but behind, but placed before great people. So a giving person will have gates open before him, and he will um, attain the company of of great ones. Matan Adam Yachiv Lo Vidifne Gedolim Yanhenu, Ki Bavu Matanosav Yahavuhu Malachim Vesarim Vekol Adam, because of his generosity, his gifts, he will be loved by the kings and the ministers and by all different types of people. Now, I don't know about this because it sounds like you're talking about yeah, bribery and um, you know, resulting in money buying you love. But we all know, as the Prophet said, money can't buy you love. So, <laughs> speaking of yes, British fame or rather infamy, the famous British prophet said, money can't buy you love. <laughs> yeah, money can buy you a lot of things, but it can't buy you love. And here he's talking about buying people's adoration, people's admiration, people's affection through giving gifts. But uh, I don't think that that should be what a person has in mind. But rather he should think about being uh, genuinely benevolent in order to benefit other people not for the purpose of receiving their goodwill, but for the purpose of doing goodwill. And if the result of that is a reciprocal response of goodwill, so be it. But that shouldn't be the person's intention. Therefore, giving has the result of spreading goodwill. But of course, that's not the purpose of giving. The purpose of giving should be to give, not to get. And I think that's what he's referring to here. So we shouldn't be cynical about what he's saying here. Vein davar ba'olam ha'mevi adam divus. There is no better way for people to kind of appreciate the world than through the act of generosity. Um, which means that by giving to the world, you actually develop an affinity for the world. Just as when you give to a person, you develop a love for the person. Which is interesting because clearly when you give to somebody, the person who receives should feel good towards the person who is giving, although that's not often the case. In fact, the person can smother with his giving. Uh, what I'm saying here is that uh, although it would seem that the recipient should feel good towards the giver, although that's not always true, yeah, what we see here is that the giver actually feels good towards the recipient. Um, and uh, the word for love is ahava, where the root for ahava is hav, and hav means to give, so that love is actually engendered through giving. And when one gives, generally one gives of oneself or of one's possessions, and since generally people are uh, disposed to love themselves, when they give of themselves to others, they love that which is of themselves in the other, and therefore they tend to love right, um, the recipient to which they give. And therefore, it's a, reciprocal, it's a reciprocal type of a thing. Even if a person is giving for some reason which is not connected to, to love, the act of giving often does bring about and catalyzes feelings of love because uh, if for another reason a person loves himself and he, and he therefore loves what of his self he has given to others. And therefore, he says, giving, being generous, is certainly a way of connecting people to the world. He's criticized people from being connected to this worldly matters, indulging in this worldly concerns, interests, and enjoyments. So why is he seeming to, to, to credit 
the act of giving with connecting one to the world. I guess the point is that uh, while certainly a person should not should refrain from being overly enmeshed in things of this worldly nature or becoming, let's say, indulgent in them, still a person is not supposed to be an isolationist, an ascetic, somebody who's totally separate from society. Rather, a person should be aware of what's going on involved in his fellow human being, helping when he can, and so forth and so on. I mean, to say giving is a way of ensuring that a person interacts with the world in a healthy way, giving to the world instead of taking from it. And therefore, it's a very good thing. And also in the world to come, he'll also get just reward for his generosity of giving to this world. There are three types of generosity. Echad, the one, nedivus b'mamon, being generous with one's money. Hasheni, nedivus b'guf, being generous with one's body. Yeah, of course, it doesn't mean. Yeah, giving out his body, right, left and center. But rather, right, giving of one's, you know, effort and time, doing things for other people. Ashlishi nedivus b'chokma, being generous with his wisdom, sharing of his knowledge with others. Ve'elu hashalosha hayu ba'avram avinu. These three were present with Avram. Shayinu dovimomon, he was generous with money. Duxiv it says, ve'yita eshel, he planted this eshel where the little meaning of Eshel is a type of a tree, but we've learned in the previous chapter here that Eshel is also understood by sages to be an acronym for Achila, Shusia, Nevi'ah, eating, drinking, and escorting, which is intended to describe how Avram Avinu was very hospitable and therefore gave of his food, of his drink, and also, um, um, yes, to, to, to receive guests and so forth. Nadiba Gufo, he was also generous with the body, he saved Lot, his nephew, the son of his brother, and he actually fought on behalf of him in order to save him. Even though Lot was a kind of a shady character, still Avram, because of their filial relationship, sacrificed and endangered himself in order to, uh, to, to physically do good for his nephew. That was a very generous act of his. And we know that he didn't take any retribution for it either. When he was offered uh, to be uh, paid for his uh, services uh, as a um, mercenary, he declined. And he said, no, right? I don't want anything. You can pay the soldiers, give them their portion, but what? Yeah, Avram. But I don't want, I don't want any, any, any part of the booty. Keep the spoils for yourself. Furthermore, Nadiv... What? No, he was just happy to have his, uh, his, his life back. Yeah. yeah. What about this idea that uh, when you give to someone, they may come to hate you? It's a story with... I can't remember uh, the, the, the people in the story where he said, um, this person despises you and is responsible as well. I never gave him anything. Or I need it, never did anything for him. Yeah, yeah. In other words, in other words, if you give people, they'll come to hate you. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was kind of alluding to before when I said sometimes a person can give and cause uh, animosity uh, if he gives in a way which you know kind of smothers the other person. It can smother the person in different ways, either by overgiving, and therefore as a result making the person feel beholden. To or giving to him in a way which makes him feel like you're lording it over him, or using the act of giving to make claims against him. But generally speaking, if a person is giving altruistically, then that won't, uh, that, that, that won't result in negative feelings. Although, if it's to a negative person, even altruistic giving can result in a resentment. Because the person says, oh God, it's, it's so good, I can't stand it. Because <laughs> you know, he himself is like bitter and embittered, and he can't stand the expression of goodness in somebody else. And, um, 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 you know, it's, uh, a person might consider whether he should be giving to uh, a person of low character who will come to despise him, even though he's giving altruistically, just because he's giving, and that's good. So if my being good is going to make him angry, why be good to him? I'm not doing him a service. Unless, you know, uh, he, he deserves suffering, my being good, so let him suffer. <laughs> but then your good is not really being particularly good. You know? These things are very subtle, you know. Nodiv Bahokmoso, Avram Avinu was also 
very generous with his wisdom, his knowledge. Ki limed l'kol ha'am haderech yashar ad she nisgayeru. Because he taught people the straight path until they were convinced and inspired to convert. Dixiv, as it says, Ves ha-nefesh asher asu The nefesh, the souls that were made by Avram and Sora in Haran. Now we know that they did not have any biological children at that time. But nevertheless, the Torah says that they made nefashos. How did they make souls? By converting them to the ways of godliness. And therefore, this attribute of generosity with one's wealth, with one's talents, and with one's intelligence, this is great, very, very greatly praised. Through them, a person gains honor, although, like I pointed out, I don't think the author's intention is that this should be the person's motivation. But the result is, if he does it truly, is that he will receive honor. It says, Rabim Yekalu Pene Nadiv. Many people will kind of um, receive, make themselves available to receive the countenance of the of the generous one. Udvarov Nishmoim Kishu Mochiah Pene Adam Lishuv La Vodas Aboris Barach. And his words are also received by others when he rebukes them in term in term in, in, in intending to, to cause them to return to the ways of God. If he needs help, people will be quick to help him, and people will also be in a state of peace with him. Why? Because he's a generous, good-natured fellow. Again, if he uses giving in order to um, um, you know, manipulate people in order to get what he wants, when he's down, he can't expect people to help him because... Uh, the help that he gave was with the motivation of his success. So why should people help him when he's down? But if it's a, if it's a genuine giving, then generally speaking, good people will be reciprocal and help him even when he's down. No, that when a person is giving at the right time, for example, with poor people who are God-fearing, such a form of giving is like a hidden treasure which will not be lost through length of days. It remains buried and, and, and protected. And it stands forever. And this is the intention of King Solomon when he said, Send your bread oh, out to what? Send your bread off, cast your bread off to the water. After many days, you will find it. Upshat Pasuk, the simple meaning of the Pasuk is, Diber al is talking primarily about generosity. A person who plants charity will reap its harvest. A person who's generous will actually become wealthy. You might think, well, he's so generous, he'll give up all of his wealth and become poor. No, he'll actually become more wealthy. It says, There are those who will spread out their money and get even more. I suppose it doesn't mean all who spread their money will get more, but there are among those who spread their money, there are those who get more. Plenty of people who spread their money because they are spendthrifts, is that the right word? Um, they, um, yes, you know, they're, very, they're spendthrifts. I think that means, right, they're very easy with their money um, just because they like to spend money. That's not what we're talking about. Pisa does not have Oh, um, furthermore, it says, one who gives to the poor will not be lacking. And this makes sense. Like it says in the Torah, and they shall give. What's that? Very good. And uh, the word is one of those words which can be read. No, they're calling. It's also the Truma. Venatanu is something else. Venatanu, they gave to the Mishkan. Venatanu. 
And uh, that word is one of those words that can, is spelled the same way forwards and backwards. Venatenu. Yeah. So that by giving to the Mishkan, you receive, right, by God in return. And here too as well, therefore, when you give charity to God's downtrodden, the poor, then God gives you back as well. God gives you back as well. And the reason is because God generally deposits money by a person in order to be dispensed appropriately. God uses this person as a kind of uh, agent through which to dispense his wealth in the world. And if a person is doing so correctly, then God says, well, I see my young lad is using his money wisely. That's justification for giving him more. But if a person squanders the wealth that God gives him, wasting it on things that God does not want him to use it for, then God says, that nasty little brat, I'm not going to give him any more money. He's constantly wasting it at the candy store. Yeah. So therefore, a person who gives to the poor can expect to get back in return. And we also find, You can test me with this, God says. The sages explain, referring to miser. Right? About which it says, Aser bishvil shite asher. Give my sir in order that you become wealthy. You can ca and you can test me on this. You give my sir, you become wealthy. Why? You're micering to the money. You're tithing the money that I've given you, and using it, giving to the people that I have ordered you, commanded you to give it to. You will not lack because of that. You'll get more. If you don't give, you'll actually get less. And there's a famous story about a person who had a field, and the field was very bountiful, and every year. It gave forth enough produce that he was meistering from his field a hundred, let's say, bushels. Every year, he got a hundred bushels. He gave that, I mean, he, every, every year he, he, he tithed a hundred bushels, and, and the next year he got enough produce to, to tithe the hundred bushels. And this went on for years until he died. His son inherited the land. And after the first year's harvest, he saw that he would have to give a hundred bushels of tithing. That's quite a lot. A hundred bushels? I'll give ninety. So the next year he earned nine hundred. Ninety bushels? I'll give eighty. Next year he earned eighty. Until he went down to seventy and sixty. And this way he squandered all of his wealth because he was miserly about distributing the bounty that God had given him. And there was, God gave him according to what he gave. He gave 70, so God gave him 700. He gave 60, so God gave him 600. If he had given 100, then God would have given him according to what he gave. Right? Which would have been 1,000. And therefore, right, these are all different examples to illustrate the point here. Noisen the rush, ein machsor. One who gives to the poor will not lack. Vamar David, al anashim hanadivim, David said about uh, generous people, Pizar Noson Nev Yonim, Tzid Koschoy Omeres Toad. He disseminated his wealth among the poor. His charity, meaning his, his righteousness, will stand for him forever. Vahamida Hashuva Zois, Halvaahi Etzla Boris Boach. In fact, this attribute can be vo viewed as a form of loaning money to God Himself. As it says, Shinemar, Malve Hashem Hoinen Dal. Meaning, one who gives to the poor, it's as if he is loaning money to God. Hey, my, my son, he needs some help. He's in kind of difficult uh, straits. Would you loan him some money? Sure, God. God's happy with that. It's not like God couldn't cover the bill. He could, but he wants people to be connected with one another through giving. And, uh, and this is one of the venues of doing so. And it's for this reason the sages say, more than the wealthy person gives to the poor, the poor gives to the wealthy. The poor person gives the wealthy person an opportunity to give. That's a great opportunity. And it was said by the wise man, say chesed do loving kindness with one who is deserving of it. 
ומי שאינו ראוי לו, כשאתה ראוי לעשוי סוי. And one who is not deserving of it, you at least should make yourself deserving to do it. I'm not sure entirely what that means. I think the point is, give good to a person who deserves it, and, and, and make yourself deserving of giving a person who doesn't deserve it. I think that's what it means. Steal your money and then give ten percent charity. Oh, that's what it. Oh, that's what I. I wasn't thinking that, but maybe that's what it means. Make sure. I thought it meant to say. I thought it meant even if you judge that person being not worthy of it, at least you yourself should view yourself as being worthy of giving him. Maybe view it as a merit to give, even if he doesn't deserve it. But I'm not sure about that. Um, maybe what you're saying is correct. Give the person who's deserving and make yourself deserving of giving. Meaning, make sure that your money is kosher, right? Thank you. Otherwise, giving the charity might make you feel that the way you obtain the money is fine because you gave you gave someone who needs it, so it might. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make you feel. Person justify stealing a thousand dollars when he says, "I'll give a hundred of it to charity." Yeah. <laughs> That's called the spiritual money laundering. Yeah. V'amar misha yiten matana gadoyla lemisha shoyel hamatana. A person who gives a generous gift to one who asks for it, who chetzi nadiv, he's only half generous. Avad nadiv hashalem, but a person who's perfectly generous, who wants to share noisen todir, ma'at rav kodem shi shalumimenu, he'll give a lot or little, but consistently even before people ask. So either he's lauding, anticipating other people's needs without putting them in the embarrassing situation of having to ask, or he means. Which is kind of what I was trying to explore earlier, the possibility that even if a person is not deemed of be, deemed worthy, of, meaning needy, of, of, of receiving, you can still give to the person, and that would still be an act of generosity, even if they don't need it. I'm not sure about that, because in the end of the day, your, 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 your resources are not limited, and therefore you'd be giving, depleting your resources on people who don't need it. So I'm still not 100% sure about that. But in any case... Um, the sages blessed memory said, Midas and Adivos Tuluya Behergel that generosity depends on regularity. Ki eno nikra nodiv achi e rogil bukol es bukol shal is nadev befi holto. He can only be considered generous when he is constantly being generous according to his ability. Ki odom shenoisa ne mishiroi liten elef zuvim bapamachas. A person who gives somebody who's deserving of it a thousand, let's say, gold pieces, but a thousand zuvim and one giving, ain't no nodif, he can't be considered to be generous to the extent, commission us an elef zuvim be elef pamim, to somebody who gives a thousand, a thousand times. Because the act of generosity, even though each act is worth less money, but, it, but, but, but there are still a thousand acts of charity as opposed to one. So that one time a thousand is less than a thousand times one. Kozov v'zov v'mokam eroi. Ki oisoy shenoisan elef zehuvim b'chayim achas nisoy radaito dihis nadev. He had the, he was stirred to give. V'charkach poska mimeno. And then he stopped. He was stirred to give, he gave, and it was over. But the other person who's constantly distributing in smaller denominations is constantly thinking about giving again and again and again and again and again. V'gam ne'ingen ha'sachar e'no domein misha poidei shavu e'echad ha'yoshev b'mishma ha'davar chov b'mea denarim sh'hu da'i mechsaro k'mo shepodo ha'sara shavuyim The same thing, for example, receiving reward. If a person is redeeming, let's say, Jewish captives, redeeming ten for the price of one is greater because you're redeeming ten people as opposed to one. Ah, you should be redeeming. Look at how much he put into it. Here he put in a thousand, and there he put in a thousand. Yes, but here he put a thousand for one, and here he put a thousand for ten, a hundred each one. So that's much greater. Or if he took care of the needs not of one poor person, but of ten. Even though he took care of less needs of each, but at least he took care of some of the needs of more. So according to this, let's say there are four of us in the room. 
Is that right? Well, hi. Please, the cameraman. Yeah, uh, our dear Benjamin. But let's, you know, four students in the class. Yeah, and we decide we're going to take upon ourselves supporting four, four people. So you take Joe, you take Mike, I'll take Sam, you take Alex. Okay? And we'll each give each of them $100 a month. It would actually be better if each of us gives 25 yeah, to each one of the four. So that we have four separate acts of giving as opposed to one. And I guess that's the way it works. If you have poor people, you give a little bit. And assuming that everyone in the community gives a little bit to all, so the, all, the needs of all are covered, right? even though it's only partially by each of the member of the community. In this way, there's more acts of giving being done, while the, the, the total needs of the poor people are being taken care of. Regarding this, our sages said, Everything according to the majority of the deed. So the deed is done repeatedly. It has more value. Right? Not by the, I suppose, not by the, 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 the size of the deed, but the number of the deeds. Anybody who blinds himself from the need to give tzedakah, it's as if he's serving idols. Vinikra Blial, and he's called wicked. Russia, wicked. Achzari, mean, hote, sinner. Blial, how do we know he's considered to be a bad guy? Shinimar. He shomer lecha penhiye dvar im levav lecha blial. Be careful lest you have something blial in your heart. Lemar to say, karvesh nas hasheva. The Shemitah year is quickly approaching. Isn't that very true? Shnas Shemitah. And your eyes will become evil against your poor friend, and you won't give him. What's this referring to? Reb Mordechai, the fact that loans are nullified in the Shemitah year. If their due date is in the Shemitah year, be careful as the Shemitah year approaches, lest you say, I'm not going to loan, because the Shemitah is going to come and nullify that loan. And then where you go, go and we'll give. No, the Torah says give. So you see, here, somebody who's stingy is called a bli'al. Bli'al can be uh, explained as bli'ol, somebody who has no ol shamayim. Bli'ol. And the ol malchut shamayim. Shanimar says, so we did that one. Um, he's also called an achzori. The chsivas is written, v'rachamei reshoyim achzori. The mercy of the wicked is callousness. Meaning, if you see a wicked person being nice, it's usually because he's got some wickedness in mind. And if he's stingy, he is also negating his connection to Avraham Yitzhak and Yaakov. Because they were merciful. Rather, he's showing his affinity for the non-Jews who are mean. Shneimar says, "Achzori hema v'lo yirachanu." They are mean, and they will not have mercy. And anybody who is merciful, so God shows him mercy from on high. Shneimar says, "V'noson l'harachamim v'richamcha v'hirvecha." As a result of your being generous, God will also give you mercy and be merciful to you and will increase you. The nosen stokalanin beseber panin ros with an evil countenance. Ibed chuso the filo nosen harbe. He he loses his reward even though he gives a lot. The tov mimenu peruto beseber panin yafos. It's better than that. Even a small amount of money with a smile. Like it says in the Pasuk, Veloven Shinov Micholov, from which um, the verse intends to convey the notion of blessing, that his teeth will become whitened with milk. There will be so much milk in abundance that his calcium-rich teeth will be nice and white. Um, but the sages say, Veloven Shinai Micholov, which means that even if a person has nothing to give, showing his pearly whites 
in some situations can even be better than being mashkehu bechalav, loyven shinaim, showing his pearly whites, meaning showing the person a smile, um, a, a sincere smile, is sometimes more of more value than giving a person right a glass of milk, yes, but with a, with a sour countenance. Fetoshi ten kodim sheishal, better that the person give even before being asked. Anticipate people's needs and save them, spare them the embarrassment of needing to ask. Fetov she ten beseser, it's even better if he gives anonymously. The chsiv as it says, moton beseser yichpe af. Giving privately in secret, anonymously. That nullifies, let's say, divine anger. There were folks who would throw money over their shoulder and the poor people would come and take it from behind without him seeing, in order to avoid him seeing who, who's, who he's giving to. So none, neither knows the other. As oni and mevuyash, the poor person is not embarrassed. Klalo shodavar, the general of thumb here is kol ma'ashe yocho lahastir as much as he can. Hide his giving, conceal his giving. Shelo yedo ha'oni mihu anoisen, in order that the poor person will not know who's giving, and also that he won't know who's getting. Shelo yedo ha'noisen mihu mekabel yesh lo lahastir. He is encouraged to conceal. A person does give charity. He should do with the tzdaka loving kindness. How, how so? For example, buying with the money something that's needed by the poor person. If you're going to give charity, you can actually give charity in the form of chesed. How so? You translate the monetary value of what you're giving to some pragmatic object, you know, an intangible object like food. So if you buy, if you go to the butcher, you buy a nice kosher piece of meat and you prepare it right this way, so you've spared him the need to go buy it and to prepare it, particularly as a poor person that doesn't have a stove, you know, or you're talking about bread, rather he might not have an oven to cook it. So you're actually translating the charity to hesed. Um, or, for example, you can find what it is that he needs, or you have the ability, for example, to barter and get the price down, you're benefiting the poor people. Yeah? Or let's say, for example, you can do chesed even if you're giving money and you don't translate it into some tangible object. For example, you know the price of let's say bread is, is low right now. So you should quickly give it to him so you can use it to buy the bread and have some left over for something else. Whereas if you were going to wait until next week as you thought you'd, you'd give, but then the prices might be up and he would get less value out of his money. So this way, even when you're giving money, there's still chesed. You see, there's very, very subtle, many ways in which you can improve your act of giving, your acts of giving. Vazay Omar Navi, regarding this, it was said by the Prophet, Give according to the amount of stocker that you have, but reap according to the, uh, the degree of chesed. That's a beautiful way of explaining this verse. You plant the monetary value of the stocker, but you give it in a way where you actually reap a greater value based on the chesed by giving the monetary value in, let's say, meat that we talked about and sparing the, the poor person the need to have to go out and buy it and so forth and so on. So you're actually uh, getting more for your money, more mitzvah for your money. Okay. Very interesting. <laughs>